What would you do if you found a book about an unusual story in your family history? This book, In the One Spirit, is about a woman who did a form of energy healing. This book was always a curiosity in my family because Harry Vernet Rhodes was also my great grandmother. Was it possible that she could do the many things that are written about in her life story? Did she really heal blind children so that they could see again? Not just once, but 14 different times? There are also many family stories that make it clear that this is an accurate recounting of events. My father loved to tell how she instantly removed a severe migraine with a gesture like she was scooping the pain up in her hands and then just tossing it away. My mother recalls seeing little sparks coming from her grandmother's fingers sometimes, and also seeing grandma's parlor filled each day with individuals dropping in to be healed. She never charged for her services, although she did accept donations, which paid for her small apartment. So she wasn't in it for the money. As you listen to her words, notice how she speaks in an equally matter-of-fact manner, whether she is telling stories from her childhood or discussions with her unseen guides and teachers. In between the amazing feats, she tries to explain how this all works and that she is no one extraordinary, but just someone willing to take on the stigma of being an unconventional healer. Also, how she put aside her doubts and could learn so she could do this work. She taught others to do this work sometimes, but mainly she just wanted to help other people. The co-author of the book authored the viral article about the American seer Edgar Cayce that first brought attention to him in 1943. His work in this field is now very well known. After this, the author, Marguerite Armand Bro encountered many tales of other psychics and healers. The author found only two people in her career that were interesting enough to write about, Edgar Cayce and Harry Vernet Rhodes. I'm recording these chapters because my 97-year-old mother wanted to hear it again. Despite her own experiences, she still asks, how is this possible? I've asked this too, but over a lifetime, I have found many answers and built a model of the world where this can be true. Others like Dean Radin have scientifically studied this sort of thing. The research in this field has to be top-notch in order to get published. The Stargate program, also known as Psychic Spies, was run for decades by the U.S. government, first to disprove psychic phenomenon and then to understand it. The data is now unclassified, so you can read about this all for yourself. Harry imparts some of the best, clearest information on this topic in a very, this is just what I do sort of way, along with a lot of information she received from her teachers through automatic writing and through her living friends and her own life experiences. I often get questions about where is this coming from? I can assure you that she is grounded in the idea that God and love are one thing. You will hear likely a bit more than you might like to about the importance of these core values of living a good spiritual life, of optimism, of faith, of choosing to help others and the benefits of gratitude, as well as how to tell if something nasty is trying to lead her astray. Basically, it is like learning to avoid a narcissistic con man from the way that she tells it. I like that this book is free of new age jargon and also from any of the big spiritualist movements. She never went looking for this. Instead, she started when she went to see a local doctor for anxiety when she was 30. You can see all this in chapters two and three. She was as skeptical as anyone might be at first. Is this story relevant today? I'm amazed at how many of the things that she says apply to today's life as a way to reduce stress in your life and to discover what really matters to you. She shows about how to learn to trust your own inner guidance. It doesn't matter if you believe it's spirits or if this voice in your head is your subconscious. We all have at least one positive voice that encourages us and a negative one that leads to anxiety and fear. She tells how to learn to trust your own experience and your own truths. For me, this is a great starting point in shifting to use whole brain thinking and to trust our own personal experience. It is an adventure, a challenge, and exciting even when you're doing normal everyday things. She believed that everyone can learn to see and do incredible things.